This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. If you followed coverage of Barack Obama's May 23rd speech at the National Defense University, you'd think something big has changed in the war on terror. Its scope was narrowed, perhaps considerably, as the war as it's currently being waged winds down. That's probably the message the White House wanted the press to send, but is it true? The New York Times saw a pivot. Obama was redefining what has been a global war into a more targeted assault on terrorist groups threatening the United States. And the paper's editorial page cheered what it said was a momentous turning point in post-9-11 America. So it was interesting to read the coverage of the speech from McClatchy. The headline alone was a distinct contrast from the rest of the press corps. As reporters Leslie Clark and Jonathan Landay put it, Obama appeared to be laying groundwork for an expansion of the controversial targeted killings. And other analysts were trying to determine what precisely had changed. Well, days later, the White House was still trying to sell the speech as a big shift, but even the New York Times admitted on May 28th that even as he set new standards, a debate broke out about what they actually meant and what would actually change. Well, that's probably where the whole discussion should have started. Two million people came out around the globe May 25th to protest the agricultural biotechnology giant Monsanto. A global protest against a big multinational corporation, that should be big news, right? But it wasn't. The Associated Press ran a story the day of the event, and the Los Angeles Times and Philadelphia Inquirer ran stories on local events. A New York Times article the next day about consumers searching for non-genetically modified foods mentioned in passing that there had been a protest involving at least 2 million people in 436 cities in 52 countries. And that was about it, with one exception. On CNN's The Lead, Jake Tapper on May 28th touched on the march, and then he discussed the GMO food debate and recent legislation pertaining to the food industry. You'd really have hoped that more in the media would have gone that deeply into it at least, given that, as Tapper pointed out, each of us likely eats something made by Monsanto every single day. Finally, the White House's war on whistleblowers has led some mainstream journalists to complain publicly, and that's good. The nature of some of the complaints is a little odd, like Face the Nation host Bob Schieffer, who is angry over the way the White House rations guests to Sunday morning chat shows. It's reached the point that if I want to interview anyone in the administration on camera, from the lowest level worker to a White House official, I have to go through the White House press office. If their chosen spokesman turns out to have no direct connection to the story of the moment, as was the case when U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice was sent out to explain the Benghazi episode, then that's what we and you, the taxpayer, get. And it usually isn't much. Of course, no one is forcing Schieffer to book White House officials at all. He might have thought twice about booking ubiquitous TV pundit David Gergen. He was there the same day to talk about Obama's terror speech, which he liked, though he thought it left out important things like Iran. As Gergen put it, weapons of mass destruction coming out of Iran could throw all of this out. We could be right back in a war on terror. Well, Gergen seems to be referring to the Iranian nuclear weapons that U.S. intelligence agencies say don't exist. And even if Iran had nukes, Gergen doesn't explain why that would throw us back into a war on terror any more than nuclear-armed states like Pakistan or Israel do. Schieffer may be annoyed at the quality of White House guests, but he can't blame them for that one. I'm Janine Jackson. This is Fair TV.